Welcome to the brand new Sketchwork TV How Did They Do That Show with me, Justin Heesman. Sketchwork TV. This week we're going to be looking at the snow globe effect from our Christmas video. So let's take a look at that effect right now and then we'll see how to create it. Uh -huh. Merry Christmas to one and all from Sketchwork TV. Okay, uh, this um, project has three pre-comps, uh, one for the base, one for the globe, and one for the footage, and uh, one main comp which will contain your scene. Okay, so the first things first, we need to create a brand new comp. So, uh, new composition, uh, give it the name, we'll call this one base. And the size, um, because the project I used was in 720p, which is uh, 1280 pixels wide, I'm going to make the whole thing square. So 1280 by 1280. Uh, frame rate's fine and OK. So I've got a brand new comp there. It's a square size. Right, you know, double click on the rectangle to create a new shape layer. The shape layer is what we're going to use to create our base. OK, we now need to resize this layer down. And uh, we want to make it around about one sixth of the whole thing. So that looks pretty good. And uh, we move it up. And we want to put it in around, around half of the top there, top half there. OK, right. Next thing, we want to click uh, down on the rectangle. You want to get rid of the normal stroke, because we don't want that. Get rid of the normal fill, we don't want that. Highlight the rectangle and we want to add a gradient stroke and we also want to add a gradient fill. Okay, so on the gradient stroke, we want to pull that one down. We want the stroke width to be about 55, so let's up that to about 55. The uh, end point we want to be about 62. And um, the gradient, we want to be, I don't know, about uh, a light grey to a dark grey. And OK. OK, so that's our, um, our gradient stroke. Now, if we want to go down to the gradient fill. OK, right here we need... Um, the start point, when well, I say about 190, minus 190. And the end point to be about 179. And that's zero by 179. So it's half and half there. Now we change the gradient um, to, I, I used like a, a yellow to an orange, so I'm gonna stick with that. So if we go yellow to an orange, so that's now looking pretty much like what I originally had. OK. So uh, finally, uh, we want to add some kind of text to our base. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to increase the stroke width a little bit there. Just make it a bit bigger. OK, so next we want to add some text. So let's add some text. Um, what else we call this? Happy holidays. And you want to put it around the center. When you're doing this, you don't really want to uh, go too far to the edges, because if you do that, it's going to end up on the back side of the snow globe, and no one's going to be able to see it, which is a bit of a waste of time. So that's good. So keep it central. We can always come back uh, if you're not happy with it and change it afterwards, but that'll do for now. So that is our, um, our base done. There we go. So we've had a shape layer here, which is our actual... Um, it's going to be the colour of our base, including the grey around the outside. The text is what's going to be displayed on the text. OK, next we want to create another new comp. So new composition, and this is going to be our footage. So let's call this footage. 
Again, you want it to be exactly the same size as your previous uh, comp. Again, I use 720p, uh, so the, the maximum width would be 1280, so I'll make it 1280 by 1280 square. There we go, another one. Okay, you want to, first of all, I added a chimney. So I'm gonna look down on my images and drag a chimney out. I then rotoscoped around the chimney, which we can do. So I've got a very, very rough job here. So rotoscope round, don't know what that thing is. Looks like a TV aerial next to it. I don't really want this uh, shopping basket on the top there. Who knows why there's a shopping basket on there. Okay, down to our chimney and about to there across. Okay, so there's my chimney. Okay, I want to reposition my chimney, so I'm going to move it down and resize it a bit so it feels a bit more of the screen. There we go. Um, I want to add a slight curves adjustment to that because it looks a bit washed out there. So effect, color correction, and curves. I'm going to put a bit of an S-curve on that to give it a bit of contrast. There we go. Probably a little bit too much. That'll do for now. Right, so there's our chimney. Second thing to do is add your footage. Um, I uh, used a green screen. You can use anything you like. It can be a, a, a solid image or it, it can be a green screen as well. So I used a green screen, so I'm going to drop my um, green screen footage on. I'm not going to talk about how I keyed it out in this um, in this episode because there's, there's no point. That's a whole thing. If you want to uh, see how I did that, then let me know and I can do a whole uh, project based around about green screen keying. Okay, so I'm just going to drop my one on. Okay. Okay, so I've now dropped on my uh, keyed f my keyed footage, which is just uh, me and Dean sticking our heads out the chimney, waffling on a bit, and then disappearing off again. Okay, so what I need to do is you want to create some snow now for, for that. Um, I in in the actual uh, Christmas video I use Trapco particular, but for this example I'm going to use uh, the CC Particle World, which comes with After Effects, which is great because everyone's got that. So let's put in a brand new solid, doesn't matter what color, make comp size, and it goes. Uh, and we'll do Effect Simulation CC Particle World. Okay, starts off, looks terrible, looks like a. It uh, looks like I'm spewing out the top of the chimney. Um, so let's have a look at some of these settings. Okay, I want to look at uh, the floor first. I don't want the floor to be there. I want to drop the floor all the way down to about 0.65. And I want the birth rate to be about 6. So I want it to be a lot more, a lot more particles there. And I want it to last about 6 seconds per particle. Six seconds. Um, producer. So, so I've opened the producer. I want the position Y to be a bit different. So I want to change that to minus 1.5. 
so it starts a lot further up otherwise it just looks like the snow coming out the chimney which is not what we're after um so i've moved the position of y all the way up to one point minus 1.15 i want to increase the radius of x as well because i want it to be coming out of one single place i want it to be coming out uh, quite a, a larger radius so i'm going to increase that to two and i also want it to be um give it some depth as well so i'm going to give it a radius of z of two as well there we go um next thing i want to do is in the physics open up the physics and uh, i want to change the velocity to zero um i want the gravity to be a lot less so 0.05 i'm going for there we go we can always change some of these afterwards if they don't quite work um next if you go down to the particle i want to change the particle to a faded sphere which is more kind of like snow um i want the uh, birth and death size to be about the same which they are which is fine i want the birth color and the death color to both be white as well so if we go in there change them both to white like so there we go because we don't want to have any other funny colored snow going on Okay, so if we look at this at the moment, yeah, it's flowing down pretty good. That's great. Okay, but what we don't want, we don't want it to start coming in from the top like that. We want it to be started straight away. So we just grab the uh, whole layer and move it along until it's filling the screen. And that way it will start snowing from the moment that layer kicks off. So that's great. Um, I think that's everything we need to do for that layer. Oh, yeah, if you want to add um, what you could do, you could duplicate the um, CC particle world and put it at the bottom of your footage uh, and just slightly change the producer um, settings. So maybe change the radius a bit, uh, radius of Z, position, like that. And maybe just change the, uh, not the long, no, not that one, uh, maybe just the birth rate a little bit. Uh, and if you pop pop that underneath your footage, then so it just means that some of the particles will be going behind the chimney and behind your footage as well. I mean, that's a bit crazy. You might want to just dull that down a bit. But for now, that is fine. OK, the final part of this uh, snow globe is to create the snow globe itself. So we're going to create a new composition, composition, new composition. We'll call this one globe. And you want it to be the same square size as before. So that's 1280 by 1280 in my example. So, OK, here we go. Brand new composition. Right. First thing we want to do is create a new solid. So right click new solid. I want it to be a cyan color, which is OK. Make comp size and we'll call this one mask. And OK. I want to create a... Uh, a circle mask here, so create an ellipse. So double click that. There we go. So it creates a perfect circle in the composition. Um, we want to now duplicate that mask. So select the mask down here and Control D to create the new mask. We want to turn this into a subtract. And so we just pull this down. Um, we want to really whack up the feather to about one thirty. And will change the expansion to about minus 25. So it really sucks it in there. And um, the overall mask then, we're going to uh, lower the opacity down to 50%. So just dull it out a little bit. And that's great. That's that layer finished. Uh, we now want to create another new solid. So new solid. Again, cyan comp size. And uh, this one is going to be the actual sphere itself. So let's call this one globe, which is cool. And OK, this one's a, above. OK, so what we want to do on this one, we want to create a CC. So drop in a CC sphere. It creates a perfect, a perfect sphere in the middle there. OK, you want to whack up the radius so it matches your actual globe itself. That's about fine for me. And do you want to change the render mode to outside? We don't want to see through it. And uh, the line height, 
uh, light height, change that to 100 so the light will be shining directly at it and not from one side as it was before. That's cool. Now reduce that opacity down, so give that about 10%. There we go, so now there's our globe. There's our globe itself. Right, now if we drop on our chimney composition, there he is, put that right at the bottom, and there we have it. There's our, our chimney composition there. You want to go back to the mask layer and just copy your mask number one and paste it on your chimney. So it's only going to be inside the, uh, the globe itself. Now you want to drop on a optic, opt, compens optics compensation onto the chimney layer and you want to whack that up to about about 60 about 60 61 so that will then bend it inwards to make give it an um give it the impression that it's inside a sphere itself um now because it's sucked it all inwards it's not at the sides of the actual globe itself so what we need to do is just mm on the chimney layer to bring up the mask properties and you want to play with the expansion and you just want to expand it out so it gets to the edges there we go that's about right if you go too far it can go outside again so just yeah that looks pretty good so now it's uh, snowing inside the snow globe that's good okay next thing we want to do is um, Okay, the next thing we want to do is drop the base onto the layer. But before we do that, we're going to need to right click, composition settings, and now it's all in, in place. You want to just increase the height. I'm increasing it to about 1400, so it gives you a bit of space to drop uh, the, the actual base onto it. And we select the, the layers that we've used so far and just move them up, up, up a bit. There we go. And you could even scale down ever so slightly as well there we go that's good so drop on the base there's our base my one justin and dean sketchwork tv okay so now you want to drop on the base which is the one i created earlier on which is up the top there and on the base, you're going to put on a CC sphere. <clears throat> there we go, and there's our base. Bit small at the moment, but hey, we can change all of that. Right, I want to increase my radius quite a bit, so let's just whack it up, and we can move uh, the offset down to wherever it wants to be. I'll whack up the size. Okay, and the angle of this is, is all to do with, if you go back to your base layer, if I move, the, if you move these layers, I'll move them down ever so slightly, it will change in here. So let's just I'll maybe move them up. Oh, that's too much. Down. And it, it's where the angle is on the, on the actual um, CC sphere. So maybe move it up to ever so slightly. Yeah, that's that, that. That looks fine. Just need to now just pull the radius back a bit. It's about there, and move it up. There we go. So there's my my snow globe, and as as you can see, the happy holiday is is slightly off and going around the back of the actual object. So in that case, you can come back in here and just reduce the font size a little bit down there we go now if we go back to the globe it kind of fits on so you can play around with that um, to, to suit whatever your your effect is going to be okay one thing you can notice is the bottom of the chimney is hidden so you can correct this either by uh, moving your footage or what I'll do I'll just move the 
uh, base up ever so slightly. And then just increase the radius. And make it fit. There we go. Uh, maybe just change the angle again. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Okay, it all depends on what your footage is. So, you know, just make it suit whatever your your footage is. That's good for now. Okay, so that's that one. And then what we can do now, um, we can add a, um, a one of the light settings here. We can change this. So let's say. The intensity, let's turn that down to about 40. Uh, the line, light high, we'll change that to minus 33. Give it a bit of a darker, darker look. And put the light from the other direction. We can just play around with the intensities here. Don't want it to be too bright. That's fine for now. And if we go to the shading, let's change some of these. Let's bring the ambient up to about 76. Ah, yeah, that's why I put that one down. So let's put them back to 40 and minus 33. So putting at 76. And uh, the diffuse we'll put to 66. And the specular to about 71. That's good. Okay, and then we'll add in a go to the effects a CC light sweep there we go so let's drop that on the bottom there and it gives this kind of nice little shine to it to make it look a bit more three-dimensional so we've got the CC light sweep on there let's just change a couple of those settings so let's move the center to about here that's good and we'll change the shape to be a more of a smoother sh uh, shape. And uh, let's change the width to let's narrow it down a little bit to about 25. Yeah, that's good. And the direction. We can play with the direction. That looks okay. Maybe just up the width of us slightly there. That's good. Okay, so um, there we go. That's that's the snow globe there. Um, and then what you can do is if we duplicate the base, control D, and drop it right at the bottom, and then change, uh, you can get on the bottom layer, you can get rid of the CC light sweep, and um, the top base level, le um, top base le level should be rendering the, not the inside, the outside only. And then the bottom layer should be doing the inside only. And depending on where, your, um, where you've positioned your base, um, you, you can see it on some circumstances, you can see it come around the back of your, back of your snow globe in the sides here. In mine, because of the angle I've got it at, it doesn't really notice, but it's good there because then you can, you can change around. So if I go to the base now and, and uh, just move them, up right up there for a minute and then you can see there you go so you can see underneath it's now rendering the other side of it as well but behind um, but I'm just going to move that back for now because that suits what I want to do brilliant so that is the globe itself now finished okay so on to the final part of this and that's just to put these three comps these three pre-comps into your main scene um, so in my scene if we go back here all I've done is I've got a, a still image. I've in, I've made the still image look a bit more realistic by adding some live fire to it, which makes it a bit more interesting. I've added a camera move to it. And also like at the top of the Christmas tree, I've got a lens flare, which flickers a bit. And at the top of the, if we zoom in a bit down here, top of the snow globe, I've got a lens flare there as well, 
which uh, which sort of twinkles as well, which gives uh, yeah, it just gives it a bit more life. Now, you know, you can you can use this for lots of different things. Um, you know, for it's a British weather over here, which is not not too good. Uh, you could let's have a look at this one. There you go. We're frozen, frozen in time. Uh, where it's snowing and yeah, not a lot else. We're we're just not really moving because we're frozen solid. Or if, uh, oh, for example, you can uh, rain fire and put yourself in a fireball. Justin and Dean, get us out. And in there, I've put some flames around the chimney. We're in a fire. We've got a bit of a camera move there. I've changed the particle system to be a bit more fiery, and uh, yeah, a bit more fun. Um, so this is this doesn't have to just be used for um, for just Christmas snow globes. You can put loads of things in these. You can put anyone in a in a, in a globe. Um, but where I don't know wherever I seem to go, I'm always stuck in a globe with Dean. <laughs> so that's how you put someone in a snow globe. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of How Did They Do That? And uh, next week, we're going to be taking a look at the floor smashing effect from episode three, The Hero Trial. So let's take a look at that clip now, and then we'll move on to the burning question of the week. Yeah, my main power is uh, superhuman strength. Superhuman strength? Yeah, and it's that. sort of something like this, oh, really. Okay, Mr. Nolan, the academy starts in four weeks, so we will see you there. Proper job. Thank you. And finally, the Sketchwork TV question of the week. What movie are you most looking forward to in 2012? Uh, leave your responses below or again on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. Okay, so until next time, I'm Justin Heesman and we'll see you again on Sketchwork TV. How did they do that? Sketchwork TV.